here. Uh, and I'll give you stand five and let's go for it. Okay. Well, let me just film a few seconds of this stuff. Okay. And I'll give you a standing five. I will. Get the poster. I got the poster. <laughs> okay. Action. Hi, I'm Nicholas Grabowski. I'm here at the Fangoria Convention, May 2003. And I'm here advertising my book, The Everborn. I started my career writing Prey Serpent's Prey. It was published in 1988. And um, I went on from there to do the novelization for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I also did Sweet Dreams Lady Moon, which went over pretty good. And uh, now The Everborn, which took me about 10 or 12 years to write. Um, it's, uh, it's my crowning achievement so far. And what I've done was, I've done to the alien phenomenon what Anne Rice did with vampires. I kind of turned the mythology around and made it my own and, um, and created a, kind of like a semi-epic. What I did was I um, uh, took the alien phenomenon and I, um, I took them out of the whole E.T. Um, premise from outer space and I kind of uh, blended them in with the mythology of the human race. Um, what the Everborn pretty much is about is a race of beings that have been here since the dawn of man. And um, they, uh, what they do is they, uh, they live lifetime after lifetime. Uh, they would get somebody pregnant in their, in their lifetime and then they would diminish into a fetal state. They'd lose their hair and become more and more, more, and more fetal. And I always thought those aliens were like a, a fetal human. Um, uh, the way that they look. So, anyway, uh, they would do this unknowing who they really are. And um, after that, that fetal state regresses, they would disappear and they would become the, their own fathers and be reborn. So they're reincarnated from life to life to life. And this particular story is about one of them that's in their next life transformed into a set of twins. One is a uh, soulless and one has a soul. And the soulless one is a serial killer. And um, they're being pursued by Max Polito, who's a ufologist. And he knows about their secret and he wants to expose them to the world. It's a very Clive Barker-esque novel. And um, it has a lot of uh, a lot of creatures and a lot of a lot of different new and exciting things that nobody's ever heard about before about this particular subject. I got one question to ask. As, as far as your writing process, what, what drives you to write and create, basically? Well, this, in so many words. Actually, uh, just my imagination. I have so many things that go on in my head. It's a lot easier to be a writer than, for instance, to be a movie producer or director because you don't have to generally work with other people. It's just, it starts out with just you and a notepad and a pen, maybe a bottle of bud, and uh, you just write, and then you just perfect it, and you show it to people, and you send it out. And, and uh, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's just you don't have to rely on anybody but yourself, basically. Um, and uh, I've always liked to do that. Sometimes I guess I could be a loner, so if I have a big story in my head, I just take my own time at my own pace and I work it out and I get it ready to present to the world. And um, that's basically it. And could you say your name and you're watching the Joe Flynn Show? And watching what? Uh, say your, state your name and say you're watching the Joe Flynn Show. Joe Flynn? Yeah, Joe Flynn Show. Uh, Joe, Joe Flint? Joe, I don't know. I don't you were a Yeah, you did, but I... Um, Joe Flynn. Show. Okay, I'll give you standing five. And you're watching the Joe Flynn Show.